The announcement for the Battlefront Classic Collection caught us pretty off guard, but it was exactly what Star Wars fans needed. After covering EA's Battlefronts for six years now, I thought I was reaching the end of my rope with this franchise. Thank you for checking out today's video, guys. This is Star, and Battlefront is back, baby! I'm thinking I'm back! This is the first Star Wars announcement in what feels like forever that has had a universally positive response from the fans, and the proof is in the sales. The Battlefront Classic Collection is, currently, as of making this video, keeping up with juggernauts like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and Elden Ring when it comes to pre-orders. On the PlayStation Store, it's currently sitting as the second best-selling pre-order in the UK, and technically the third best-selling pre-order in the US, if you count all these different versions of Final Fantasy as the same thing. That's actually incredible that these games from 2005 are keeping up with some of the most anticipated releases of the year. And I can't help but wonder if Electronic Arts has seen these numbers yet. No, I haven't let go of the fact they didn't make Battlefront 3, and I probably never will. The Battlefront Classic Collection is what a lot of Star Wars fans and gamers have been asking for, even if it doesn't come in the package that we expected. EA made two banger multiplayer games with their Battlefronts. I know a lot will disagree, they weren't perfect, but at least the developers at DICE put their hearts and souls into those games, and as far as I'm concerned, they delivered. A Battlefront 3 seemed like a no-brainer after that, but as we all know, EA pulled the plug on Battlefront as a whole. Hold on. This whole operation was your idea. Ever since, we've had nothing but single-player game after single-player game get announced, which isn't a bad thing at all, but it left those of us with that multiplayer itch nowhere to go except other franchises outside of Star Wars. We were a multiplayer community without a home. Now that the classic collection is a thing, it feels like we're right back to form. The coolest part is that younger players who didn't get to experience these original games can see where it all started and why this franchise means so much to so many people. On that note, there are so many good things to say about this re-release. The trailer for the collection hit over a million views on YouTube within its first day. It reached at least number six on trending, and as I mentioned earlier, pre-sales are going nuts. This is especially exciting for PlayStation players because it's the first time that we've been able to play these games on last and current gen consoles. Xbox and PC have had this luxury for a while, but getting to play these classics on the PS5 is gonna be great probably why the pre-sales for that platform are so high. This footage was captured on the Steam version of the game, and even on there, multiplayer lobbies rarely fill up. That's why the multiplayer support for this re-release is such a big deal. It might not be Battlefront 3, but this is the next best thing, because these lobbies are about to be packed with players. I'm guessing there's gonna be more active matches on this game than on EA's Battlefront 2. All the classic and original modes are returning in this re-release, and then some. XL mode, for example, is a massive scale mode with extra troopers on each side, which was only available on PC before due to older consoles not being able to handle it. Now, that's not an issue, and every platform gets to try XL mode with the re-release. Hero Assault, one of the most popular modes in the game, also gets an update. It used to only be playable on the Moss Eisley map, but now it's available on every ground map, which is something that we've wanted for nearly 20 years. The bonus DLC heroes for the Xbox version, Kit Fisto and Asajj Ventress, are also available to everybody as well as the exclusive planet Renvar. Now all we need is Ahsoka, and we've legit got a better hero roster than EA's game. All the single-player campaigns, hunt mode, and the absolute giga-chad of battlefront modes to ever exist, Galactic Conquest, are all coming back. Look out for a dedicated video on that one. In short, yes, this is definitely a 30-year-old gamer's dream come true, but we all get to live it. Now to address some bad, because it's not all sunshine and rainbows. The Classic Collection does have that $35 price tag, which is putting some players off. For a PlayStation guy like me, that seems pretty reasonable, considering we've never had access to these games before, but others aren't so understanding, especially if they already owned the game on Steam or Xbox. There are discounts for those players, but it's still a talking point. I also have to bring up one of the biggest questions I've seen the community have, and it would be great if Aspire or maybe a community manager could come out and clarify. In this case, though, I think the silence speaks louder than words. There probably will not be crossplay in the Battlefront Classic Collection. Otherwise, I feel like Aspire would just come out and say, yes, it's there. The Star Wars Twitter page, and even Aspire's Twitter page, has either replied or retweeted about the game. 
so we know they're active and watching the socials. They know we're talking about it. They probably don't want to say no so that sales don't take a hit, but I think straight up transparency would go a long way. Not to mention, the Xbox and Steam stores don't mention crossplay multiplayer in the features, so that's a pretty clear sign that there's no crossplay. The game just got announced the other day though, so they're probably gauging the initial response, which I think was overall positive. I should probably also bring up the confusion between cross-generation and cross-platform. There were a few news outlets that were saying there is cross-play in the game, but I think they were getting it mixed up with the cross-gen feature, which is confirmed. Cross-generation just means the older consoles like PS4 and Xbox One can also play this, but I think whoever wrote those articles just saw the word cross and assumed it meant crossplay. So in case any of you saw those articles, this is just another reminder to never consume Imperial propaganda trash. A physical release is also something on players' minds. As of now, we don't know if there will be any physical copies in circulation. Aspire hasn't come out to either confirm nor deny it, I wouldn't hold my breath on a physical release, but there is still precedent for it possibly happening. Limited Run Games has collaborated with Aspire before, on previous remasters like Star Wars Republic Commando, to get physical copies of that game into circulation. Maybe the same could happen here, but I wouldn't bet on it. If it happens though, great. Is it really ugly though? There was a spat of controversy around the Classic Collection's inclusion of the DLC heroes. Allegedly, Aspire Media used an outdated fan-made mod to get the Xbox-exclusive heroes Ventress and Kit Fisto ported to the other platforms, and they allegedly did this without the permission of the mod's author. It was apparent that they used the mod because Ventress and Kit are supposed to have wholly unique animations that no other characters in the game have. But what we see in the trailer here is just a reskin of other heroes. For Asajj, it's probably a reskin of Ayla Sakura, since she's holding her sabers in the same way. The modder actually didn't seem to mind much, except to say that Aspire should probably use the updated mod if that's the route they're gonna go down. The actual DLC characters don't behave like this, so the updated mod is meant to fix that and give the characters their own animation. There's no real proof that this is in fact what Aspire did outside of what we see in the trailers, but it's still kind of eyebrow raising. It's nothing serious, but it kind of makes me look at this multi-million dollar corporation some kind of way. Like, really? You couldn't just port it? But whatever. I'm not tripping too hard over it, and neither is the modder. I'm just stoked I get to play as Ventress and Kit on Renvar, and you should be too. This last bit doesn't really fit in any of the three categories, but I wanted to have a short conversation about live service with this game, because I know a lot of people take issue with the term live service, but just imagine for a second, this game getting monthly or even bi-monthly patches and content updates just to keep things fresh, especially if they did something close to what DICE did with EA's Battlefront 2. I'd imagine it's a lot easier to add Ahsoka to a game like this than it would be to add her to EA's game. Ahsoka and Ventress were the two most wanted heroes to round out the roster in the EA remake, and we've already got Asajj in the Classic Collection. I don't know how realistic new content would be, but at least some quality of life improvements every month would go a long way. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments, but anyway guys, that is all I've got for this video. The Classic Collection has absolutely shivered my timbers, and I can't wait to play this again. I'm planning on some huge community content, like getting big teams together to duke it out in Battlefront, so if you want to get involved or just stay in the loop with all things Star Wars Battlefront, make sure you subscribe to the channel and get notified. If you liked today's video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, leave a thumbs down. But that's going to do it from me. This has been Star, and I will see you next time. Peace.